Good evening, everyone, and hello to our viewers on Facebook and on SMU Channel 3. Uh, my name is Diana Coppin, and I am representing the Historic Preservation Commission by introducing our May lecture series program for this evening. Uh, some of my co-HPC people that are here with me tonight, Maureen Oxlin in the back, Bob Rose up front, and I think that's it. Um, we've been enjoying the past three presentations that we have had thus far, and I am looking forward to Sharifa Jones and Kevin Talam sharing about the history of FlagFest and also giving us some stories about past FlagFest events. Please join me in welcoming Sharifa and Kevin. Well, thank you, Diana. It is a, uh, a pleasure to, uh, to be asked to come and speak about uh, one of the biggest events in Spencer that has been held since 1985. FlagFest is definitely a, a special tradition in Spencer, and uh, we look forward to uh, going down memory lane and talking about how this event got started. It is a unique story, actually, and, um, and how it has blossomed and, and grown into what it is today. And we're pretty proud that FlagFest has become a, uh, a true family event and uh, it is a great way for us to celebrate our community, but at the same time show patriotism and celebrate our American flag. Right on, Kevin. All I can say is I think he should just keep on with the presentation because <laughs> he's just dynamic, right? Oh, yeah, you're too kind. You're too kind. So, yeah, we are going to talk about the uh, the history of FlagFest. And I guess before we go any further, uh, if you've paid attention uh, in, in past years, we've always talked about how FlagFest originated in 1984. And, and that is what we said for... Yeah, Bob Rose here, the, one of the legends of Spencer thought that Flagfest started in 1984. And, and ladies and gentlemen, all of those years, we've been lying to you. We have been lying. Yes. We'll go to confession later. <laughs> we will have to go to confession yeah. later. Uh, it turns out Flagfest started in 1985. So, so we were off by a year. But, yes, uh, and Diana, who was doing some research for us, she helped discover that by looking through the newspaper. So we had told her 1984, and she uh, let us know, uh-uh, 1985, that's the first mention of it. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, Spencer was dubbed the flag city of Iowa a long time ago, and uh, it, it's no secret that, that Spencer got that name because of the, uh, the very famous Avenue of Flags, which started a long time ago in 1964. Uh, Frank Thomas and Jerry Dean, along with the VFW and American Legion, started out with 90 flags that were dedicated, and that became the Grand Avenue flags. And, and we still enjoy that today. Uh, they are, are decorated uh, along the cemeteries uh, at Memorial Day. Uh, that tradition began in uh, 1975 with the American Legion. They, uh, they had 10 to 12 teams from the Legion, and about 50 flags are displayed at the courthouse. And that happens about six times during the year, I believe. Yes, that's correct. And I think what was interesting is just to learn um, that now just how much their collection of flags have grown. Um, so in some of Diana's work, she had a conversation with Frank Lehman, who's with the American Legion, and um, he talked about the Grand Avenue flags and that there, of course, are the 50 state flags, plus they have over 200 U.S. American flags um, and that those are displayed um, twice a year. And so I think they differentiate when they have the U.S. flags versus the state flags. And those two times a year are 4th of July and during Clay County Fair Week. And they look beautiful. It's always such a really way, a really beautiful way for people to come into the community and, and see, of course, the beautiful baskets and, of course, the flags. And they've been preserved over the years, as a lot of you know. Uh, they have dedicated trailers that are covered, and they put them in storage all year round so that they are protected and that we can continue that tradition. And I, I, by a show of hands in this room and, and those watching, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you have, have seen that display when it is set up in its entirety. And it is, it is absolutely breathtaking when you see that, and, and it really makes you proud to be an American. And to all of those people who 
started that tradition and now continue to take care of those flags. It takes a lot of volunteers to put those up every year. Uh, they have to find the, uh, the holes in the ground, make sure they're clean, and then put them up properly, and then properly take them down, get them folded up, and put back on those trailers. It really does take a lot of time and dedication. It does, and with that segue, I would say if there is anybody that's ever interested in getting uh, involved and wanting to volunteer in this really fantastic uh, display of patriotic uh, support in our community. Let us know. I know that they are looking for more. Um, probably, I don't want to. I don't want to segregate, but maybe some younger knees, because you are on the ground, is my understanding, and they are really, you know, digging out dirt or whatever has maybe been collected over the past year. So if you have young knees. Give us a call at the chamber and we can get you connected. So, yeah. Um, the other times that the American flags are displayed, um, but do not include the 50 state flags, are Memorial Day, Flag Fest, Labor Day, and Veterans Day. So. So that's a little bit of a history of, of how Spencer became the official flag city of Iowa. And uh, let's see, it was re first reported uh, on June 22nd of 1985 and declared to be Spencer's first flag city. And, uh, and there you can see the uh, very first flyer that actually appeared to the public as the first annual flag fest, which was Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, June 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. And, and for those of you who have been around a long time, uh, every year we've had different logos and different patriotic designs, and they, uh, they were changed up from year to year, and that was the first official flyer for FlagFest. That's correct, and I did print it off, and I'm passing that around now. So I think what's interesting through this and, and through just you know life in general, there are always changes or improvements or updates, but largely it's still in June, obviously with Flag but Flag Day being the 14th, but it is still a Friday, Saturday, Sunday event. And what's interesting is what you will see in some of the similarities, some of the events that they had at the first Flag Fest and what we have still to this day. Um, again, just a shout out to Diana. I think what was really important in this when she came to us was that Kevin and I were both pretty transparent with her and that we said, listen, we're happy to do this, happy to help dig through what we have at the chamber, but I do not have time to go look at microfilm. And Diana said, I will do that. I will take some of that on. Um, so she conducted interviews. So our presentation tonight does include information from interviews, um, newspaper articles, and of course, photos as well. And so uh, how it all began is uh, back in 1985, there, uh, there was some conversation. And uh, for those of you that were around in the, the mid-1980s, the 80s were a tough time. You, you had the farm crisis, interest rates were, were sky high and, and through the roof, and, and there wasn't a lot of hope at that time. And there were some uh, community leaders, I guess, if you will, who uh, got together and decided uh, we need to do something positive for our community that can bring people together and give people a reason to celebrate. And some of those people would be, you'll probably recognize some of these names, Don Pearson, and he was owner of Don Pearson Ford, in fact, still is, as a matter of fact. Sharon Stansfold, uh, she was a uh, co-owner of Matt Furniture here in Spencer. Gene Till, uh, former manager of J.C. Penney. Donna Hall from the Daily Reporter. Anna DeFries, Laura Wakefield, and another name that uh, did not make the slide, and that is Dave Potratz. They all met at Maxwell's restaurant and they decided we need to come up with something. And all of them had to show up with an idea of what we could do to celebrate our community. And ironically, every single one of them came with an idea, and every idea that was presented had something to do with the American flag, because they knew that Spencer was the flag city of Iowa. And it was from that roundtable discussion that Flagfest came to fruition. Yes. It was birthed. It was birthed. <laughs> and I think what is interesting is that, you know, Spencer realized they really wanted a patriotic celebration. So sometimes people might say, well, why isn't there a celebration at the 4th of July? Well, this is really the celebration that, that Spencer has decided is important to them, is something around Flag Day. Um, and additionally, that it really still is. The chamber obviously still plans the majority of it, but largely we still rely on community members, the city, 
um, you know, the businesses really support this financially because there is still a cost to put this event on, just that there's no cost to the public or to visitors that want to attend this. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the quotes that Diana came across from Anne, um, yeah, Anne DeFries was, I remember it well. Spencer had gone through a tough time closing the meat packing plant and layoffs, and Larry, her, her husband, was the chamber director during the planning stages, he has now passed away, wanted to do something that would interest everyone, and patriotism it was. We were always so impressed with the love that the residents had for their community. So just I think it's, it's wonderful to hear how it came about and also that it continues in much the same vein as well. You know, FlagFest is uh, pretty well known for having a lot of different events that is geared towards everybody, not just adults, not just kids, but for the entire family. Uh, one memory that I have is uh, about 20 years ago, for the first time, there were hot air balloon displays, and you could actually go up and ride in a tethered hot air balloon. And for those that know me well, I don't like heights. And I was a co-chair that year, and I know Becky and the other co-chairs said, well, we're going to go up, and we're going to enjoy this little hot air balloon ride. And I said, you know what, I think I'll pass. And they said, no, if we're going, you're going. And, and I'm quite a bit taller. I was six foot four back then, and I'm still six foot four today. And in a hot air balloon, you know, you're in the basket. And in order to make that hot air balloon go up and rise, you know, they have a, a hot fire, okay? And that hot fire is right here, right here. <laughs> here. And not only could I feel it, but I swear my, my hair was on fire. Uh, so I remember that. Never have I gone back up in a tethered balloon for that reason. But uh, that was at uh, West Leach Park is where they had that tethered balloon. And that was a sight to be able to see that in the skyline of Spencer that year. Yeah, how beautiful that would be, too. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and so the hot air balloon displays, I'm like, I'm thinking, you know, Blake, I think this might, we might need to bring this back, but we'll see. I don't know what the insurance looks like on that. So I would be happy to watch from the ground. Perfect. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. I will also take some pictures <laughs> as well. So, um, so the parade, obviously, the parade still happens uh, Saturday. Uh, that does not and has not happened by any small feat. Um, it takes the collaboration of the city of Spencer, the police department, um, public works, city planning, um, all of these different entities, and then the volunteers, Clay County Fair as well, and we're so fortunate that the Clay County Fair, that we have them, but also that they allow us to use their property because the Clay County Fair is in fact a privately owned facility and they open it so graciously to the community. Uh, we would not be able to have the effective lineup that we have, and Kevin can talk a little bit more about that too, just because of his role, um, that we have without having the fair um, involved in the community. For those of you that have ever had experience in driving in a parade, the routine is as you show up to the community and chances are you probably line up on, on side streets and residential areas and it can get to be rather congested and cluttered when you have parade entries on both sides of the street and it can be hard to get through and if you're going in the opposite direction of where you're supposed to be, how do you get turned around? And, and it, can be, it can be a little stressful, especially if you're carrying a big float and, and so by having the privilege of utilizing the fairgrounds, we can spread out and, and get everybody lined up where everybody has room, everybody is safe, and, and we can get everybody off of the fairgrounds to the parade route in, a, in an orderly manner. I do want to give a shout out to a business, South Park Mall, Kathy Anderson is here. Uh, for many years, their float from the South Park Mall was declared one of the most patriotic and it was a tradition that they had for many, many years and they uh, really put a lot of hours into uh, Ross, Abe Betsy Ross, Abe Lincoln, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, every year it was different, but but the theme was always one thing, and that was patriotism and the American flag. And and for a long time, we did have contests for most creative float, most patriotic, and uh, or or the fan favorite, if you will. And and that might be something we bring back in the future, as uh, we do have a lot of creativity to make that parade fun and and special. And and one of the most exciting parts is. 
I would say it brings between three and 4,000 people to town uh, total to watch that parade. There's no way of, of gauging the exact number, but on a beautiful day, uh, it is amazing, uh, the support that we get from the community. Absolutely, and, and I hope Blake has taken some notes, so maybe we'll bring back some of those uh, judging opportunities or voting and a way for the public to get involved. Um, we were actually just talking today about how do we show at the chamber that there is a benefit um, to having the parade because it does take a lot of time and planning. Um, and so we kind of talked about maybe actually a method that we're gonna try this year to, to count how many people watch the parade. So we'll keep you posted on that. Um, so also um, art shows, uh, hot dog and lemonade stands along Grand Avenue. These were some of the original events. Weekend dances were popular. Um, in fact, the first dance was the Gateway North Shopping Center and that included live bands. Um, also later, East 5th Street was closed for traffic for a street dance. Um, on one occasion, the hotel hosted a beach party in the business parking lot, hauling tons of sand to create a beach-like atmosphere. I actually have experience in this. I'm not sure that we would bring this back because it is a lot of work. <laughs> um, one quote that Sharon Stanswold offered was, each year Flag Fest offers new and unique events. It's exciting to see the Flag Fest planning committee's newest attractions each year. So these are just um, some snippets. These were scanned in from the original article um, that Diana had found for us. So you've got an actress singing, um, you know, she was from the Okaboji Summer Theater. You've got the Dutch dancers. Um, so these were actual, um, part of the actual article in the initial 1985 uh, paper. And then we also do have some actual photos from that first flag fest in 1985. I don't know, does this look familiar to anybody? There were some hot air balloons that first year, and I believe there was two of them that very first year, and uh, uh, some patriotic setups in, in yards and uh, uh, it, it really makes it special when uh, people in the community become invested in the event as well. And there was the official opening ceremonies. It looked like it rained during the opening ceremonies, but uh, if you see, that uh, definitely didn't prevent people from coming out. And then uh, the photo on your right there, I believe, was that from the... Uh, 150th. 150th. Yeah. So when I came across, so we have some photos from 1985 Flag Fest at the chamber. And when I came across the one on the left, and of course, you know, they're all prints. And, you know, I love the smell of photos, old photo photos especially. Um, I thought, you know, how fitting in that, you know, in 1985, they started off at the courthouse. And last year, especially for our um, opening ceremonies, we also started off at the courthouse. So just interesting that, you know, that those, that that place holds um, value, obviously, in our community and obviously in our county, too. So here are some other photos from 1985. So the street dances. I'm assuming that the, the photo on the left, that that is the now Farmers Bank building, which was an attorney's office or a bank, um, doctor's office, maybe. Um, but street dance or a dance um, in their parking lot there and the firefighter uh, water fights which we actually um, had tried to do these last year two years ago for the 150th and unfortunately we didn't get any um, fire departments that wanted to participate in it and it was one event that so there were several events that we had planned for the 150th and some of you may know that we didn't hold because people didn't sign up so when we hear feedback now about why don't you do this and how about you don't do this and why do you do this and not this, it comes down to people and people participating largely. So uh, the firefighter water fights, that was um, one from the original and it was one that we had tried to bring back during the 150th. So, so if you like water, maybe we'll bring it back again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a few photos here, which, you know, honestly, I mean, some of these, Besides the short shorts, you would think that these could be present day-ish, uh, but canoeing the Little Sioux River, so that still happens. Always depends on the height of the river, as long as it's not too high or too low. Um, horses, 
horses are still in the parade to this day and it's it really just brings a great element you know when we were talking a little bit about the parade lineup um, it's very different to line up a car or a truck versus a semi and making sure they can make the turns mm -hmm. and that the trees are trimmed in order to get them into the fairgrounds and that we don't damage anything on the fairgrounds as they're turning in and out. Um, and then obviously food. I always feel like food brings people together. So here they were grilling hamburgers out on what? East 5th and Grand-ish area. Yep. So yeah. You know, diving into the uh, the uh, challenges of uh, Flag Fest and especially the parade, um, I uh, I have been the parade chair now for about uh, I think this is my eleventh year. Infinity. Uh, uh, infinity. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> we are all replaceable, right? <laughs> uh, you know, there. Um, one of the challenges is uh, we have a U.S. highway that goes through town, Highway 71. And when you have a parade and you want to uh, uh, shut down the roads uh, for safety reasons, you have to go through proper protocol. And city streets, obviously, you go through the city council ahead of time and, and make sure that uh, you you uh, cross your T's and dot your I's and, and, and have that taken care of. But when you have a, a highway, you do have to go through the DOT and, and make sure that uh, you go through their protocol to make sure that that happens. But then when you throw a railroad in there, we all know we have a train that goes through town several times a day. Um, it, it's very important that during a parade you don't have that train go through while that parade is happening. So you do have to work with the, uh, the railroad department to, uh, to make sure that you can have a window there. Usually we uh, allow a two hour window, I think. We have two hours, we can close Highway 71 there on Grand, and we have a two hour window that the train will not come through Spencer during those times. And you can bet your bottom dollar that we talk to them about nine months out, six months out, three months out, a month out, the week before, the day before. Um, and and, and they're at, I think they've been great. I had the pleasure of being able to work with them last year as we were transitioning staff at the chamber and um, really wonderful to work with. And, and honestly, even um, the DOT has, has been really great and, and uh, they make it fairly straightforward and the staff at City Hall are also very helpful in that. So. Um, Couple of challenges, obviously. Um, you know, in COVID during 2020, we did not have um, Flag Fest. We had nothing. I, we sh I shouldn't say we had nothing. We had the Spencer Together t um, campaign, and so I still see some of those stickers um, out and about. And we did some decorating contests, which were a huge hit as well. Yeah. Um, the residents really embraced that quite a bit. Um, and then, of course, weather. So we talk a lot, and, and I truly, really try to talk a lot too, just um, in general with our events of, you know, thinking through different scenarios, what happens if, what happens if. And so Kevin has been a huge resource in uh, checking out the weather and um, knock on wood, we're gonna have 75, 10 mile an hour winds this year. No bugs, yeah, wouldn't that be perfect? Um, in, in the history of the parade, there have been uh, a year or two where the parade has gone on and it has rained lightly. Uh, there have even been some years where we've had some cooler temperatures and some wind. But everybody always asks, have we ever had to cancel the parade? And to date, there was one time that we had to cancel the parade. Uh, we started off early that morning and we had some showers move through and I was looking at the radar and I said, you know what, I think I think this is going to move out of here and it's going to be a great day. We're going to have sunshine and, and no worries. And for the next two hours, we were clear. We even had a little bit of sunshine and it's about 1030. And I look at my phone and here we have a, a thunderstorm morning, I think, in Palo Alto County. And I'm like, well, that, that isn't good. And, uh, and then it started to rain here in Clay County and in Spencer. And as we looked a little bit further into the radar, it's now about 20 to 11 before the parade starts and it's downpouring. And, and I said, I think, I think we might as well call it. I, I don't think this is gonna move out of here anytime soon. And a couple of people said, no, let's wait it out, let's wait it out. And finally, by about 10 to 11, uh, the consensus was, I don't think it's gonna stop raining. And so we did cancel the parade. We had pretty much 95% of the floats and entries all lined up at the fairgrounds. 
it ended up being the right call because it never stopped raining the entire day. It rained until that evening. And uh, so we would have had a mess <laughs> if yeah. we if we proceeded with that parade. And and turns out there was some lightning and thunder. And, and so we were thankful that we made that call when we did. Absolutely. And so those are always things that we need to keep in mind is all the safety of everyone, the safety of those that are in the in the parade, those that are watching in that situation. And and in most years, we have a backup plan. So inflatables, of course, I'm sure parents are looking forward to letting their kids run off some energy. And so the inflatables backup plan is that we go to the Clay County Event Center and they're gracious enough to open that space up. The band, um, I know they have done the same thing in the past as well. And so we always have some backup plans for some things. Ultimately, there are some things that you're just not gonna be able to have a backup plan. Obviously, you, you know, canoeing in the river, so to speak, those kinds of things. Um, you know, with the parade, there's always invitations that go out to dignitaries. So uh, the president, the governor, um, you know, those types of things, those types of invitations. Um, also just the protocol with the parade. So sometimes we'll get a phone call from somebody the week before, two days before that I need to be in the parade and I want to be right behind this person or this entry or whatever. And that just isn't possible because there is actually parade protocol in which uh, dignitaries, um, the police need to be in the front. And so we always make sure that we follow that. So if we have dignitaries, of course, it goes federal, state, county, city, and then the flag corps um, as well, and, and making sure that everybody is in the correct order. So there are times if we have somebody that's trying to sneak in, we will say that's not allowed because we have deadlines and we have those for a reason too, which allows us to have a safe and good event as well for the community to enjoy. So those are always some of the things that are in the background. Um, another great thing that we're really fortunate is we have parade announcers in three areas. It's actually four. Oh, that's right. It is yeah, four. We, we had three for a little while. We did, and yes. now now we have four. So uh, there are certain spots along the parade route that you can sit, and if you uh, uh, like to have an announcer do commentary as the uh, entries go by, uh, we offer that. Uh, we have a uh, announcer stand right at the corner of Bethany Lutheran Church and, and Grand Avenue. Uh, we, we've had an announcing stand there for many years, and then if you go a little bit further down Grand Avenue. There is an announcing stand in front of Hope Church. There's a nice shaded area there. And then you go a little bit further where uh, Spencer Municipal Utilities used to be, which is now the uh, uh, Spencer Police Department. Uh, we have a review stand there. And then if you go downtown, down Grand Avenue, uh, right uh, right in front of Grand Bridal there at the corner of 4th and Grand, we have another announcing stand right there as well. So we're pretty proud of that. And again, those are all volunteers who come and set up the sound equipment and, and provide that uh, to help make the event more enjoyable. Yeah, and, and many of it, you know, is our other community partners that we have. During um, the 150th, we also have had the queen of radio, I believe, Rhonda Wiedeking was oh, yeah. at the courthouse. Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. was kind of an added benefit there as well. So um, I'll tell her you said that. <laughs> please do. Hopefully I get a few brownie points. Uh, so we are fortunate. We have such great partners with our local media, um, especially the radio stations as well. So, um, whoops, went a little faster. So these are just some, these pictures are, um, these are from the 150th. So one thing I have learned is that in general, we always need to make sure in, in Kevin's comment that everyone's replaceable. We always want to think that nobody's replaceable. Well, I like to operate, especially that if need be, the show will go on if someone's not there. And last year was that case. So <laughs> I had a new staff person. He had about uh, three weeks under his belt. My sister just so happened she was getting married that same weekend. Oh. And so it's really one of those things where we need to make sure whenever we're planning any kind of, kind of an event, especially Flag Fest, because it is so large, that we have other support beyond ourselves because family does come first and Blake mm -hmm. was well equipped and he had Kevin and Jeremy that were also had his back, um, our chamber board, as well as a slew of other volunteers. And 
like, I think I could just, you know, grab a chair and sit <laughs> next to the parade this coming year. No. Yeah. Um, so it's nice, though, now that, you know, Blake's got one under his belt. Um, largely, one of us is usually going around and taking pictures, but there's always um, areas in which we need help. So, um, yeah. Speaking of announcing, this would be Amanda Gloyd and Mike Carlson. They work for Spencer Municipal Utilities, and uh, they provide one of the announcing stands. But not only are they announcing, but they are also doing commentary as they do broadcast the parade live that morning on Cable Channel 3. For those maybe that are not able to get out, uh, they can watch it from the comfort of their home, and then they do play that back as well. So we really pr appreciate that service that they provide, and, and you can see they really enjoy their role as being the uh, television commentators for flag fest they do yes and so some of the you know we always are working backwards and so we need parade entries by a certain point those parade entries we do ask for something that they can say if you don't send something in we'll either make it up or there will not be anything said and so we're getting those commentary and those templates back to each of the speaker spans the week of flag fest um, it gives our speakers an opportunity or our announcers an opportunity to kind of read through see if they have any questions and that's also why the order is important that it's maintained um, you know some of our other partners black hills energy arnold motor supply um, extremely important as well i mean really we have such a, a great business community i remember it was a number of years ago uh, i was a co-chair and uh, the flag fest committee was having a conversation about do we look at finding a sponsor for flag fest and at that time you know 20 years ago you uh, you didn't really think of having a sponsor for a parade and and bob rose who was the uh, director of the chamber at the time i remember you uh, you said i'm not sure we can find somebody and you were a little hesitant and we all were uh, but you don't know unless you ask and so we uh, presented it to uh, to Black Hills Energy and and Arnold Motor and and they have been great supporters and and uh, have uh, stood behind us with uh, the parade and and we, we certainly appreciate it absolutely and you may wonder what are the expenses that we have um, so insurance obviously so we carry the insurance for the weekend for all of the events that are ours the inflatables are not free um, we do a lot of marketing as well um, a band that they have during the chill that is not free as well as the insurance and so um, there is a cost to flag fest we also uh, Blake likes to get paid I like to get paid so we this wait a minute when do I get paid oh we'll talk about that uh, I'm, I, she said I'm free yeah <laughs> And, oh. and along with that too, you know, mm. just the, the community partners. And so it, it cannot go without saying just the important role that Kevin has had um, in Flag Fest and being the parade chair um, and, and just obviously with all of the community involvement that he has. So it's been wonderful to work with Kevin these last three and a half years and to now have him working with Blake as well and, and carrying that torch because at some point, Kevin may want to pass that torch on to someone else as well and maybe just be at the announcing stand and so. So I, I want to share a story about that photo right there. Uh, I think that photo was taken about five years ago and, and, and I know it's awful dark on the screen, isn't it? Uh, so that particular year, it was about 92 degrees and sunny on that uh, Saturday, and that was when I was announcing at the corner of, of uh, Bethany Lutheran Church and Grand Avenue. And the week before, I said, uh, I'm pretty fair-skinned, and I am going to fry with that sun beating down on me. Can we, can we maybe look at getting a tent that we can put over the table so that I, uh, I, I, that I don't you know, melt? And, uh, and they were able to find me a tent, and I, I lathered in sunscreen, and so that's why the photo is so dark is because I have that tent over me, but uh, I was grateful for that. But yeah. yeah. Kevin puts in a long day. Um, you know, obviously, uh, Becky Fear Hatting, who had a role with the chamber for 25 years, so she knew the event inside and out, and um, we are continuing to carry that on. And so this was during our 150th, and you can see the different booklet and marketing material that we did for the 150th as well. And, and there was a lot more events um, that were going on um, during the 150th, which was fantastic as well.
I want to share a story about Becky. Uh, obviously, worked with her a number of times with with my role in Flagfest, and one of the many things that she would do leading up to the event is she was the one in charge of extending the letter of invitation to dignitaries. And, and every year, she would send a letter to the governor, uh, the local dignitaries as well here in Northwest Iowa and on the state level. And she would also send a letter to the president of the United States, also to the vice president and to our our elected senators and representatives, and there was one year uh, she actually got a response from Washington, D.C. Yeah. Uh, somebody had called the office and asked for Becky Fear Hatting, and, and Becky had answered the phone, and it said, uh, uh, Ms. Hatting, we have someone uh, on the line for you. It is the Vice President of the United States. And she said, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take that. And so they put her on hold, and a couple of seconds later, it was Vice President Joe Biden calling to say, uh, Ms. Fear, we uh, received your invitation, and I want to just apologize. I'm not able to make it in person, but thank you again for inviting me. So that was uh, kind of a notable moment. Uh, she shared that with me a long time ago. I've never forgotten that. It doesn't happen every day that the Vice President of the United States calls and, and thanks you for the invitation, but they can't make it in person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so uh, Becky um, obviously carried the torch for many years that those original founding volunteers um, came up with the idea, and uh, we are grateful for her time, and, and now she has passed the torch on to Blake. And um, so we want to talk a little bit about this year's Flag Fest, and uh, I wanted, I w there's a little bit of a write-up on the original one. And so I just thought I would take a moment here to read this, but Spencer's first flag fuss got off to a wet start Friday morning, which may have been the courthouse picture. But by mid-morning, both the sun and the crowds were out in force and in downtown Spencer. Scheduled events today include balloon races, 6 a.m., weather permitting, uh, tennis tournament, 9 a.m., flea market starting at 9 a.m., outside the Gateway North Mall, art festival, uh, the craft shows, Let's see what else. Yep, and they talk about a parking lot across from Surrettes or outside the SCT building in case of rain. So they were also always planning for weather. Um, let's see here, what else do they talk about? Oh, there was a 10K and a two mile run, the parade, uh, balloon races, square dancing, um, Las Vegas night out at the fairgrounds, South Park Mall, um, I think the Las Vegas night was at the South Park Mall. Uh, this is really faint printing. Uh, Parker Museum tours, a DOT seatbelt convincer at Fifth and Grand. Um, on Sunday, there will be balloon races, canoe races, uh, the mansion bingo, water fights, a baseball game, tug of war. Um, so yeah, it was just interesting. And so tug of war was also another event that we had wanted to have. Um, during the 150th as well. So I wanted to share with you the schedule that is um, in place as of now for the 2023 Flag Fest and marketing materials are getting printed as we speak. So this year will be the 37th annual occurrence. Mm -hmm. I added that in there just because of COVID and um, you know everything else that's been in our lives. But so Friday events, um, really highlighting the rocket slide um, Casey Music Man, this is something that happened last year. We had music on Friday and on Saturday night, so that's a really great partnership with City Parks. Kids Pedal Pole, also really fun. The movie in the park, that's been a huge hit. That's at North School Park. Um, we do not yet know, or maybe we do, the movie, so stay tuned for that. We're gonna keep you on the edge of your seat. And so then just some pictures. Um, so this was from the 150th year. Saturday, I came across this and then reading that there were lemonade stands and hot dog stands. I thought, you know, how sweet that this Girl Scout troop, um, they did lemonade outside Prest a couple of years ago. Um, the Christian Motorcycle Association, that's also a, a newer thing. The Imagination Library and, and really highlighting uh, more of the parks in the community has been something that Blake's been super passionate about. And it also, it provides shade I know there was one year when the inflatables were on West 5th, I believe, and it was torture from what I hear because it was so warm. So the shade is, is really wonderful. It um, provides, obviously, a nice place to cool off. 
um, kids to run around, but also there's other amenities there, playgrounds, restrooms, garbage cans. Um, and um, so those are always things that we're having to look at as we're planning events, so. The Grand Cruise is always popular, yes. uh, downtown Spencer. It's funny because the minute, and I do mean the minute the parade is over with and people start leaving downtown, that is when a lot of those classic vehicles are are scoping out their parking spot to try to get that good spot on Grand Avenue. And they stay there all day for that show that evening. And, you know, that event brings people from Minnesota, South Dakota, Nebraska. It is probably one of the better known classic car shows in the Midwest here in Spencer. Absolutely, and just an example of, you know, have, trying to have as much as we can to uh, um, draw a variety of ages and interests as well. Um, we've really tried to let people know that um, the chill event, that that's family friendly. Yes, it is at a bar. However, there's this great green space. Families bring food and picnic blankets, and it's a great opportunity to be outside. Um, the cardboard boat races, so, I saw um, cardboard, cardboard boat races when I was in Sheboygan, Wisconsin, um, gosh, probably about 15 years ago. And it was the coolest thing. And so we thought, you know what, we're going to go ahead and do this. And so I thought, wouldn't it be a great idea? Blake is now celebrating his one-year anniversary as a, a program director with the chamber. Wouldn't it be appropriate and fun for Blake to build his own boat? to compete this year at Flag Fest. So I, I offered that challenge and Blake accepted. I certainly did. Yep. <laughs> and, and we look forward to your boat, don't we? We do, and I have a coworker who just bought a whole new uh, group of appliances, so we got some real good boxes. <laughs> Okay, and then and then uh, the, the quick-witted guy you are, you, you turned around and did what? Challenged you back. <laughs> <laughs> So, so it's going to be Spencer Radio Group, KICD, versus Blake at the Spencer Chamber to see whose boat will float the furthest. Battle so the now boat. it's gone public. This is going to happen. Well, it's going to happen. We, we're making our plans as well. Great. Best of luck. You know what would be really great is if we could say, if you want to see Spencer Radio Group win, you need to put mm. your money in one bucket. Mm. And if you want to see the chamber win, you put your money in the other bucket, and all funds raised will go towards the fireworks for the 4th of July, which the chamber has also taken on recently. It's completely separate. Mm -hmm. So I will offer that out. Okay. Uh, so in other words, who will be the biggest showboat, right? <laughs> the biggest showboat. Uh-huh. Also yeah. the least likely to uh, sink. <laughs> so you have a challenge now. And I will say, Kevin, you're responsible for putting out a collection at SRG. Okay. And okay. we will have something at the chamber. Mm -hmm. And we'll figure out how to make that work. And if mm -hmm. people uh, want to drop off checks, you can do that. Um, I, I want to issue this challenge. I, I know that we have people here in the audience. We have people tuning in at home and people on Facebook Live right now that might be watching this. If you're a business, I challenge you to make a boat as well for the cardboard boat challenge. The only Absolutely. stipulation is it has to be cardboard or duct tape. Cardboard and, and duct, duct tape. tape. And duct tape. Only those, we should yeah. have just told them it was just cardboard. Oh could, my yes. gosh, jeez. Mm. Well, so, I, you know what I meant. You know what I meant. Yeah, two. Mm. You can only use those two things. Mm -hmm. um, so it'll be a, a fun event, and, and hopefully we can raise some money for fireworks as well. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. Can we get a handshake on this challenge? Oh, sure. everybody's <laughs> seen it. All right, you it. all okay. saw it, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. I can't wait. <laughs> That'll be the Sunday of Flagfest at Stolly Park, right? Yes, at Stolly mm -hmm. Park. Mm -hmm. And I think what's fun is um, our kids did it the first year we had it, <laughs> and I was kind of harping on my husband about it, like, you need to get this done, you need to get this done. The day before they were making it, I thought, whatever, you get, that is going to sink. And our son ended up winning, or I think I remember if he got first or second place, and they had, like, glued asparagus to the side of it. It was the... It was the... Uh, least appealing boat ever but asparagus they had hot glued a couple pieces of asparagus just a couple they didn't waste a lot um, and they used permanent marker it was it was a sad sad deal so with that uh, 
this is one of my favorite pictures that was taken during the 150th and um, it just is, you know, that Flag Fest really is intended to put a smile on everybody's face and for families to enjoy and it's something that's really meant to be fun and free and to celebrate our freedom and our patriotism. So. Thank you. So does anybody have any questions or, or comments or, or memories they have about FlagFest that they would like to share? Um, we, we kind of threw a lot of information, a lot of history, uh, but I know some of you in this room have, have been a part of FlagFest in, in different capacities over the years. So does anybody have anything they would like to ask or share? The rubber ducks. And they they do, wouldn't let us do it anymore because of contamination or something. Right. So they no longer do that. No, I know they yeah. don't do that. So where are the, where where are the, the ducks? ducks? No. Is that, is that a cardboard boat race? Yeah, she was asking where, where, where are the cardboard race is going to be. Yep. Yeah. Not on the river. They're at Stolly's. Yeah. Stolly's yeah. Park. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep, in Stolly's Pond. So yeah. um, I think Blake is, is – uh, really rooting for the chamber to buy a boat um but huh. i we have a backup plan for a boat just as like a, a mm -hmm. safety precaution so we always have a boat out there and and make sure that people have life jackets too so yes the boat races will be at stolly's park yeah mm -hmm. 12 o'clock 12 o'clock yeah mm -hmm. and i think what's interesting is there was what six or seven uh young people that competed last year and 200 people were there watching them and they maybe didn't know any of the competitors but it is just it's such a fun event and the energy there it's it's really great to see that so it's also really nice because uh we're utilizing the outdoors and nature rather than being at home and on our devices you know and and to teach the the youth that as well that you can have some fun outdoors uh and 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 spend quality time and have fun is a, a big part of that as well yeah absolutely mm -hmm. And I would say, too, if there's anybody that's watching on Facebook um, or watches this on replay, too, if you have stories that you want to share afterwards, too, that you can um, call the chamber and we can uh, jot those down. You can also email us mm -hmm. at the chamber as well. And, and I think it would be great for us to kind of continue just to build on on having that history of Flag Fest because this is something that was uh, just a totally new topic and idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other uh, comments or, or questions that you would like to bring up or share? What is the Grand Cruise? What is that? The Grand Cruise? Yeah. Okay. The Grand Cruise, that is uh, an event that happens on Saturday evening, and it's from 6 until 10, and that is all up and down Grand Avenue, and that is where all of the classic cars and vehicles are are parked along Grand, and and it's basically a parade, and, and people walk up and down the sidewalk and, and look at the different vehicles. The car owners are there, and you have a lot of people who cruise up and down Grand as well. There's a lot of uh, classic vehicles that they like to drive up and down Grand, and it's a it's an old time tradition during Flag Fest, and it's absolutely free, and um, and that alone brings a lot of people to town. Yeah, absolutely, and you'll notice too on. S Oh, yeah, yes. absolutely. Yep. yep, yep. We don't close the highway down for that, no. I was going to say, you'll notice sometimes when people are doing the Grand Cruise that last year, or two years ago, there were even semis that had antique cars that were for sale for someone to buy and, and fix that they would just drive up and down to. So that was, that was kind of neat. Yeah. So. One thing. Oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Tom Thumb Preschool <laughs> walked up and down Grand. Well, we walked, uh, we got to get in the parade up on 3rd Street. Oh, okay. That that was all right yep. Walk in the <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, well, thank you all for coming. Thank you to everybody who uh, is tuning in uh, at home or on social media. One thing that we do want to talk about is there is one more series left, and that 
uh, series is coming up this coming Tuesday, May 23rd, and that is going to be on the Clay County Fair Grandstand presented by Dave Potratz here in Spencer. And for those of you that know Dave Potratz, he has uh, been a longtime fair board member and for uh, over 35 years, he has been the grandstand superintendent, and so that means he's basically overseen the grandstand productions. And uh, you could about imagine he has a lot of stories to share about many of the entertainers who have come to the Clay County Fair and the uh, the changes that have happened over the years uh, with uh, developing a new stage and evolving with the times. Uh, the, uh, the entertainment at the Clay County Fair has been very special in this community, and uh, Dave is very instrumental in that. So that will be a great presentation coming up on Tuesday, and that'll be at 5.30 here at uh, City Hall Council Chambers, and that'll be the final uh, uh, series that we have for this month. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you all very much.